In this video, I'm going to expand upon our base installation of the Virtual Identity Server as an LDAP proxy server and show some of the advanced features of proxying data to and from a directory server. So let's kind of recap our environment. Uh, as we last left it with base installation, we have a one-to-one -one proxy of Active Directory, and I have a connection here to Active Directory in our LDAP Manager browser utility. Uh, notice uh, I see the user down here in Active Directory, and if I look at the, them in the tree in Active Direct or in VIS rather, I see those same set of users here. So I'm looking at Chloe, and I can see her both in Active Directory and in uh, in VIS. Uh, Again, if I make any change to uh, data, notice the description is set to something else. Uh, let's change this to changing the data. If I change any of this information, do an LDAP modify, that LDAP modify was immediately proxied down to Active Directory, and the change is here. Likewise, change here in Active Directory. On the next refresh up here in VIS, next read, you see the data. So no data is being stored at the proxy server layer, it's just proxying the data back and forth through the virtual identity server. So that kind of gives us a, a base view. Uh, this is powerful because we have a, a base uh, view, base proxy to Active Directory, but it can be much more powerful. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a couple of views of data. And that's the best way to think about using the virtual identity server as a proxy server, is think of it in terms of views. Um, much like, uh, think of Active Directory as your database table. If you have a database and you have database tables, you wouldn't give developers carte blanche access to the data tables. Rather, you'd create views for those applications uh, to consume. And the views would be the data that they need. Well, the Virtual Identity Server gives you that exact capability for an LDAP server. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and configure that. And I'm going to do that via our management console. So I'm bringing that and launching that from a desktop icon. And notice a familiar Office 2007 look and feel. You can do everything within the environment here uh, to manage and configure your environment. So I'm going to bring up our VIS configuration. And this is a way to modify our XML file, which all the configuration for the product, uh, everything is stored within the VIS config file. Uh, so uh, very easy to maintain and deploy the product. I'm going to drill in through these nodes. Uh, you can see other videos in terms of the complete uh, configuration of the product. I'm going to drill in and show you the exact piece I want to show you here. But the rest of this is explained in other videos for configuring and maintaining your VIS environment. I'm going to come down to this Visas node. Uh, so a quick quick note to explain what that is. Uh, Visa stands for Virtual Identity Server Adapter. And an adapter is a connection to a downstream directory, whether that's a database or an Active Directory or another LDAP. We have uh, here out of the boxes, you see ADS is Active Directory, Atom, SQL, Oracle, Sun1, eDirectory, or a custom one. Uh, via extensibility, you can write your own adapter. Standard Visual Studio.net code, so familiar VB.net, C Sharp.net, write your own code. So looking at this adapter, notice this is our primary one to Active Directory, and I have OU equals AD, and that's what we were seeing here over in LDAP Manager. We are seeing everything being virtualized under OU equals AD, and we're connecting into the root. So this is everything we did in that base install. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to apply a filter. So notice this LDAP filter here. I'm going to apply this filter. Ships with an out-of-the-box one that many customers take advantage of, which is uh, just apply people, groups, organizational units. All I want to do is provide a view of users and groups and the OU structure to my applications, because that's what most applications need. So I did a save, doing a save XML file, and I'm going to do exit, and now I'm going to restart the service. So we're going to publish basically just this view of users and groups to the application, rather than giving that whole view of Active Directory. Um, notice I, I restarted the service here. I'm restarting it through our interface. You could do this through Start Control Panel uh, Services icon if you want through the MMC Snap-in. We also provide the ability to do it right here so that you don't have to have two utilities up. Everything you want uh, within your environment can be maintained through this GUI here. So it stopped it. It went red. And in a second here, it's going to uh, change its gears and uh, showing that it's uh, in process and it's up and running. So we've applied that filter. And our new published view is here. I'm going to do refresh node. And look at that. Now when I browse that OU equals AD, I truly, I don't see any of these CNs. They're all CNs, not OUs. I see just the OUs because I was only concerned about showing this OU equals North America and the OU equals Florida and Georgia. So there we go. Looking now at these two nodes, 
this is all I see. So my application now has a view of just users and uh, groups. I don't have any groups here. Uh, and the OU structure. So pretty powerful. We're actually providing a lot less data out of Active Directory. So a couple of the big benefits you get is your LDAP directory. My Active Directory is more secure because I'm not letting all of this information, I don't have to give a bind account, carte blanche access all the way up at the top of the root of Active Directory. I'm giving it just the data that it needs. So it's only able to see the users and groups. So you actually, uh, data leakage prevention, that, that's the first step in data leakage prevention is don't let the data get out. So I have a more secure Active Directory. Uh, also, my Active Directory is going to be more uh, responsive. It's going to be a faster Active Directory because that query that was sent, which was object class equals star at the root of Active Directory, was transformed in real time to a more efficient query and transformed into the object class uh, equals groups, users, and containers. So only that. So Active Directory is going to be faster. Uh, the application itself is going to be faster because that, again, that, that query to Active Directory is a more efficient query and there Therefore, the application is going to see an increase in performance. So there you go, very quick and easy way to make a change. I'm going to do one more change here and show you how to create uh, yet another view. What if I wanted to create a view, if you saw my data here, uh, some of the data, some of these were contractors and they existed in both uh, the Georgia and the Florida node. And how that was depicted was their company is equal to contractor, so they all have that in like. What if I wanted to provide a view of just contractors? Because a common scenario, you'd want to show all contractors, all employees. Very easy to publish that kind of view through the virtual identity server. How I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to copy this entire visa. Since I'm going against the same Active Directory, rather than retyping all this information, I'm just going to choose Copy Visa. And there you go. Now I have a complete copy of that visa. I'm now just going to make one change. Instead of calling it OU equals AD, I'm going to call it OU equals contractor. And I'm going to just update this filter just a little bit to add in this company equals contractor. So on top of the category person, I'm going to apply the filter of get me just company equal contractor. So with this slight little change I make here, just take a look at the connections just to make sure it looks okay. So the connection active directory looks good. I'll test the connection. Everything's good. So let's go ahead and save the XML file exit out, restart the service again. We made that configuration change to the XML file uh, and it will be uh, up and running with the new joined view, or not joined view, but a new view of the data with contractors uh, here in just a second. You can also take a look at some of the other videos that show how to do complex data joining and merging, again, all point and click through our interface, no coding necessary, as well as data transformation. So again, point and click through the interface, no coding necessary. Recommend taking a look at some of those other videos on that as well. And our service is up and running almost. And there it is. So now, doing a refresh of this browser node, we see we have that OU equals AD because we kept that view around. This had all the employees and we saw employees and contractors in this view. But we also have this OU equals contractor. And when we drill into this node and take a look in the OU equals Florida and the OU equals Georgia, notice we only see users that are contractors because we have applied that filter. So we have just contractors in both the Georgia and Florida view. If we look at the OU equals AD view, we see all users as well as the contractors. So there you go. A couple of point and click changes and we now have multiple views on top of this Active Directory and a more secure Active Directory environment.